Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day so if there's something that you guys want us to react to drop the link in the comment section below and we'll do it for you a big shout out to the person that suggested this today i'm going to be reacting to the second coming of jesus peace be upon him so without wasting time let's get into the video how can we encourage the muslim world considering our current political situation and also he asked about um, which one will come first at the jail or the khilafat uh, obviously, every day passes by, we are moving forward, approaching the end of life, the day of judgment. On an individual level or on a communal level, each person lives in this life for a certain period of time. Each day passes by and zips off is deducting from his balance. He's running in short, in minus. Mm -hmm. Similarly, the whole life, the Prophet ﷺ said, He pointed with the index and the middle finger and said, My prophethood, being appointed as a prophet, my ba'tha, and the Day of Judgment are that close. Even if it is a thousand or two thousand years, with regards to the lifespan in general, it's nothing. So there are minor and major signs that precede the occurrence of the Day of Judgment. Among the major signs, the Prophet ﷺ spoke about the second coming of Jesus, the son of Mary, uh, the emergence of Al-Mahdi, the rightly guided uh, person who would lead the Ummah uh, towards success and he would lead them in several wars against the Romans, against the Persians, against uh, um, the Jews, and uh, obviously against the Dajjal. In Jerusalem and finally he will defeat them all um, and also spoke about the uh, emergence of the false Messiah and he said there is not a single prophet but he warned his people against this trial that is the worst trial that people may be exposed to so if we examine all the hadith and the prophecies pertaining Al Mahdi who is one of the descendants of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his family, and the false messiah will recognize the following, that Al-Mahdi will come out, he will be a living human being, an ordinary person. His name and his father's name would match the Prophet's name and the Prophet's father's name. There will be before Al-Mahdi a state of Khilafah. So the Khilafah will be established before the coming or the emergence of Al-Mahdi. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. But the whole Ummah would go through uh, a state of weakness. As a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will fix Al-Mahdi and make him an upright person overnight. Al-Mahdi minna al al-bayt yuslihuhu Allahu fi layla. Overnight, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make him an upright person would gather the Ummah around him in order to lead them to victory after victory then uh, finally uh, defeating the false messiah and his allies from Aspahan and uh, everywhere else. In the hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in a hadith narrated by Thawban, may Allah be pleased with him and it's a sound hadith collected by Sahih Imam Muslim, the Imam Muslim in his uh, Sahih collection, he said, Inna Allah al-arda. مشارقها ومغاربها وإن أمتي سيبلغ ملكها ما زوي لي منها الله سبحانه وتعالى have gathered the whole earth the east and the west to me It's like you're seeing a model before your very eyes and the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said I could see my domain my deen my religion and my followers are going to dominate all over the earth مشارقها وَمَغَارِبَهَا The east and the west. There will not be a single place, but it would enter Islam. As in another hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَا يَبْقَى عَلَى ظَهْرِ الْأَرْضِ بَيْتُ مَدَرٍ وَلَا وَبَرْ إِلَّا أَدْخَلَهُ اللَّهُ الْإِسْلَامِ بِعِزِّ عَزِيزٍ أَوْ بِذُلِّ ذَلِيلٍ 
عزا يعز الله به الاسلام واهله وذلا يذل الله به الكفر واهله this hadith says that there would not be a single house be made of uh, bricks rocks and stones or uh, of wood or of mud even villages and uh, huts every house shall experience islam islam is going to spread all over whether people like it or not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give this deen mighty and dignity that those who will become believers will be given this mighty and will be honored due to accepting Islam and the opposite will happen to the disbelievers all of that will happen as the Prophet sallallahu predicted the second Khilafah to come one day then when it gets weak, Al-Mahdi will emerge and will lead the Ummah to success. Then Isa, the son of Mary, will descend, peace be upon him, and he will follow the Mahdi and will refuse to lead Muslims in the prayer. Not to think that he is coming with a second message. Rather, he's coming to assure the Ummah and confirm that he is a Muslim and he's a follower of the same deen that all the prophets came with. الأنبياء إخوة العلات دينهم واحد وأمهاتهم شتى. So the second coming of Isa عليه السلام does not mean that he has a different message or he will be the last messenger. The last was Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم. They will both join hands and would lead the ummah towards victory, which will end with the defeat of the uh, false messiah uh, and his disappearance and so on. From all of that, we understand that. Uh, the Khilafah would actually be accomplished before the false Messiah and his emergence. Thank you so much. And uh, I just want you to imagine that we are living uh, in a very special time where the unexpected have already happened. Uh, many of the tyrant rulers in the Muslim world are now either being thrown in prison, being tried by their own people, or fugitives in other countries, or being killed by their own people. So a year ago, people could never imagine that one day will take place. These rulers thought that they are gods. They've got all the power in the world. They can give life and death. So as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala defeated them. So the change does not necessarily have to happen over a century or two or even decades it can happen as we see overnight in a few weeks in a few months and the rest to come inshallah azzajal. but we just need to remember one thing in order to gain this victory we as ahlu sunnati wal jama'ah may Allah make us amongst them we do not call al-mahdi alayhi salam we do not call him al-mahdi al-muntadhar the word muntadar is added by the Shia sect because life freezes until Al-Mahdi returns or emerges according to their belief. While for the mainstream of the Ummah, every person is required to work hard to do, to do their utmost in order to prove themselves in this life. Obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fulfilling their duties towards Allah and towards their communities, towards themselves. Then, if they pass away, if they die before they witness the emergence of Al-Mahdi, that is perfectly fine. So we do not call him the awaiting Mahdi. We are not just living waiting for the coming of Al-Mahdi, peace be upon him, or Jesus, the son of Mary. Uh, every person will be held accountable for what they did. And the Prophet said, اعملوا فكل ميسر لما خلق له. So the proactive Muslims are not waiting, sitting back and just waiting for a savior to come in order to achieve success on their behalf. No, at all. Rather, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, وأعد لهم ما استطعتم من قوة ومن رباط الخير ترهبون به عدو الله وعدوك. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking from us with regards to confronting our enemies on the battlefield, He does not necessarily ask us to possess nuclear weapons. If it is not possible, 
if it is not in our hands, he says, you just need to prepare as much as you can afford. Because as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, uh, upon the defeat that took place on the battle of Uhud, he said, Allahu Mawlana wa la mawla lahum. So if Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is our ally, He is our supporter, He is the one who gives victory or defeat others. Imagine if Allah is on your side and He is only asking you to exert as much effort as possible. Nothing beyond the impossible. Beyond the possible, I mean, nothing too much, just what you can afford, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will deliver. وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مِنْكُمْ وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ لَيَسْتَخْلِفَنَّهُمْ فِي الْأَرْضِ كَمَا اسْتَخْلِفَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِهِمْ وَلَيُمَكِّنَنَّ لَهُمْ دِينَهُمُ الَّذِي ارْتَضَى لَهُمْ وَلَيُبَدِّلَنَّهُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِ خَوْفِهِمْ أَمْنًا يَعْبُدُونَنِي لا يشركون بي شيئا. These are the means of success and establishment for the Muslim Ummah and the Khilafah, etc. on earth. Number one, to believe properly by the heart and to verify this belief by one's actions. Number two, عمل الصالحات. Doing the good righteous deeds. Not a single time in the Quran Allah promises the believers with heaven, but you would always find الذين آمنوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Doing the good righteous deeds must be attached and inseparable from the matter of belief. إِمَانٌ وَعَمَلٌ As Imam Abu Hanifa رحمه الله تعالى used to say, الْإِمَانُ مَا وَقَرَ فِي الْقَلْبِ وَصَدَّقَهُ الْعَمَلِ It settles in the heart, faith is what settles firmly in the heart and is been verified by one's actions, not by mere uh, claims. Uh, then يَعْبُدُونَنِي لَا يُشْرِكُونَ بِي شَيْئًا That is the third and the fourth condition. To worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to be devout worshipper. Not only in the physical uh, worship, in the prayers or fasting, but our entire life should revolve around obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because al-ibadah is doing what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether of actions or sayings, the actions of the hearts and the limbs, or the sayings of the heart or uh, the tongue without setting partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in worship. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Very interesting video. Love the message. Love, love, loved everything. And it asks, so what's the, I think I've asked this before, what's the main purpose of Jesus coming back to earth? Another question, my second question is, um, when Jesus comes back, are we going to be like, if he's wet, if he's going to come back, is he going to be preaching? And if he's going to be preaching, are we going to have, is that going to be a long time? Is it going to be a long time between the coming back of Jesus and judgment day? Or when Jesus comes, judgment day will be like in the next few hours or next few days. What's going to happen? What's the, what's the, uh, what? What's the time period that's going to be between Jesus coming and judgment? Otherwise, enjoyed watching this. A big shout out to the person that suggested it. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. And I will see you in my next reaction video.